Hello, welcome to Computer Deck and More. This is going to be a best of $18 fans and cheaper roundup. So let's get right into it. So first up, we have noise normalized and 100% PWM fan ceiling, airspeed to the CPU air cooler. And this is basically just the raw data. You can pause right here and uh, focus in on what you'd like. I'm sorry they're not going to be in numerical order. Uh, I just had problems with the Excel calculations and getting it to display the way I'd like, but you can take a look through it and uh, see which one suits yours. And now we're going to get into the graphs. So again, I do apologize. They're not in numerical order, but we can see right here the biggest line in the $18 fan in noise normalized with the CPU cooler is the Arctic P12. It is in first place. Truly an outstanding result. And if we bounce back to it, we have in second place, searching for it, ah, the Montec Metal. So that should be somewhere right up here. So it's functionally tied with a couple other ones. So we got the Montec Metal. Uh, we have the P12, PST, ARGB. And we have the uh, Arctic F12, all functionally tied for third place. Then we have a little baby step lower than that right here, and this is the TLC12, the Thermalrite C12, so that is also a great result. But I would say pretty much any fan that is over 1.1 meters per second would be overall good enough in a noise normalized situation and uh, should provide plenty of cooling for a lower powered type CPU. So we're probably talking under 150 watt heat load should be plenty sufficient for that sort of application in a good uh, air cooler, if you're looking for that. And if we crank things up to 100% PW fan ceiling, well, the best fan right here is the P12 Max. It is hands down the best fan for its price category. Now, that is raw performance. If we take a look at the noise numbers, it's pumping out 27.9 decibels. Or remember, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So if a fan is at like 20, 20 let's say 22 to 27, so that's not quite double, but it's 50% more noise. Uh, so the P12 would be 20, 50% noisier than a fan that is at 22 decibels, uh, if that makes sense. So that is a pretty significant uh, increase in noise value. Uh, next, let's go back to everything else on here is going to be quote unquote a regular fan. So out of the more regular type fans, the best is actually the Kaze Flex 2 sitting right here. And it's got the ex almost the exact same noise level at 27 decibels. So if you're noise conscious and would rather just get the max amount of air for that particular noise value, you might as well get the P12 Max because it spins faster. Um, but the Kaze Flex 2 is certainly a good result here. Um, we also have the Wonder Snail pushing out 2.2 meters per second of air. So that is also a very good result. The Montec Metal is in an okay result at 1.9 meters per second of airflow. Um, what else do we have that stands out in here? The Storm T3 is looking pretty good at 2.1. I mentioned the Wonder Snail already, 2 meters per second for the TLC 12 Pro at, uh, I said 2 meters per second. So here I'd be looking at air speeds over uh, 1.9 meters. As a general note here for 100% pitot and fan signaling, the A12X25 would have an air speed here of 1.9 meters per second. So I would say for your high end coolers, anything over 1.8 should be sufficient, 1.9 is better. Uh, if you're looking at lower end stuff, uh, anything over 1.6 should be plenty adequate in terms of overall air speed going through your particular cooler um, for uh, medium to low wattage type components. So next we have noise versus that air speed. And this is just going to be the top 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 fans with the A12X25 as a reference point here in this blue line. So again, noise versus air speed. So you can see that most of these fans actually underperform compared to the A12X25. 
um, the P12 Max is actually underperforming it pretty significantly until it starts reaching higher RPMs. Again, higher noise level for that. But then it just crushes pretty much every other fan. The closest competitor to the A12X25 on this graph, in my opinion, is probably the Arctic P12 in terms of a noise profile. With second place belonging to, um, I would say, the TLC-12, this purple one, but at higher RPMs, it does tend to fall back. But at lower ones, it's pretty close. Every other fan is a little bit too far away from my liking at higher RPMs. So it's up to you to determine if the noise level that they generate is acceptable to you. Um, and I do have uh, all these fans in their own specific uh video reviews so you can always reference all that information uh, on my channel for how they actually like do by themselves rather than trying to just like decipher all this i know that i have it really cramped in there and it can be a little bit hard to see how each of the different lines uh, actually look independently but i want to show just the difference between you know that 30 dollars fan which is the a12 x drive versus kind of everything else which is a uh, sub 18 dollars fan which is not super cheap, but cheap enough, I guess. So many fans on here, I split out into two groups. So I did leave a couple fans on here that um, I'm using as reference points between the two uh, um, graphs, basically, where one is the P12 and one is the P12 Max, just so you can get a good reference point going on for how they all line up. So on here, the P12 uh, ARGB actually looks pretty good. It's a little bit under the uh, regular version of the P12, but it's close enough that I, it kind of can be forgiven. The other fans are just a little bit too far off to be uh, top tier fans in terms of noise profiles, but certainly their airspeed performance was uh, quite good overall. Um, so it's up again up to you to determine if the extra noise that they're generating is worth it to you or not, or you, you find acceptable. But um, this is how they list overall. So if it were me on this type of type budget, I would probably get the P12, no, even knowing uh, what appears to be the inconsistencies with uh, Arctic's manufacturing process for their fans. I would just um, RMA it or return ones that uh, uh, were performing too loudly. Next, we have... Uh, the value proposition uh, for the cooler and this is how the fans generally or not generally this is how the fans list out so we have the p12 ranked second the f12 in uh, fourth and twelfth so again this is uh, noise normalized on the left side and 100 percent on the right side so you can go ahead and pause and pick out a fan of interest to know its overall value proposition so again for those of you who may or may not know, value proposition is just a simple calculation of the amount of performance you get per dollar. It does not take into account noise, although noise normalized kind of does, but it doesn't take into account noise. It doesn't take into account RGB. It is just performance per dollar. So if you are looking for a quieter fan, I would say you would want to reference the earlier data and pick out which one has the best noise profile, noise profile for you or uh, maximum performance for that or best middle ground kind of uh, overall with regard to that. So let's move on to uh, simulation test. The case simulation test, for those of you who don't know, is when I blow the fans to a box that simulates a computer case that can hold up to a 180 millimeter size fan, allowing the air to expand. So thus, as uh, my anemometer gets further away from the fan, we'll see drops in air speed as you get further away. Um, to better simulate how the airflow through an, through an actual case. And this is very important for air cool type systems because you do want the maximum air speed while hitting your CPU air cooler. And this is how the fans rank overall in the case simulation test. And we have the six inch mark noise normalized and the 11 inch mark noise normalized. Um, I didn't per list out the 100% PW fan signal uh, mark on this because in general your case fans shouldn't really be running at 100% pitot and fan signaling although um, cranking up your air speeds through your case can help with other component temperatures but generally speaking that that's why I opted uh, to present it in this way so you can tell which fans uh, list out the best let's uh, move on to the graphs so we have 
distance on the bottom axis so that I took key measurements at the 6 inch, 9, 11, and 14.5 inch mark to represent different size cases. Uh, all of them open airflow type designs, front to back airflow, assuming a CPU air cooler, um, much like the standard ones nowadays that are hold like 120, 140 millimeter size fans. Um, six is marked small form factor all the way up to 14.5, which is truly large towers. Uh, the 11 inch mark represents the mid tower type category and the nine inch mark represents uh, compact tower. So you do want to select the fan that has the best performance uh, for your needs inside its particular size category. Uh, if you don't know your particular size category, I suggest you figure that part out first before you start buying everything so you know what uh, size case you're getting to know what size components you can actually fit in there. Um, but again, this is most important for air-cooled type systems because you want the maximum airspeed through your CPU or curler, which is what these data points actually measure, the distance from the front fan to the estimated position of your CPU socket. So from my normal graphs, the yellow line is the Wonder Snail. I consider it the bottom end of what I consider to be a very good case fan, and that is because it has a very flat line. Even though at the 6, 9, and 11 inch marks, it isn't a top performer, at the 14.5 inch mark, it's actually one of the better uh, fans in the 120 millimeter class category um, that I tested. So fans that are underneath it at that 14.5 inch mark, I'd probably ignore and call them not very good. Um, fans that are up here over, what's the pink line? The TLB12 at the 6 inch mark, uh, I would consider to be good. So as we get into the 9 and the 11 inch mark, you need to pay attention to some fans drop away really quickly, such as, I know I've got two orange lines on here, one of them is brighter. The TLC12 regular edition drops away, same with the TLC12 Pro. Uh, while the other orange one, the regular P12, tends to have higher performance at that category, while it doesn't peak as well at the 6-inch mark. So you do need to watch what size case you're getting to get the best fan for your case. Um, I do have an upcoming video where I'm going to be uh, having several different size fans hooked up to my case simulation test, 120, 220s, versus 120 of two different types. Uh, 140 versus 240, and one 180, um, all consistent uh, PDO and fan signaling, measuring the noise levels, and seeing how well air blows through it for how well uh, the airspeed is maintained for one versus two fans. That is an upcoming video. So subscribe for that content. Um, but anyways, so if it, was, if it was me spending my money, in this price category, I probably would get the P12. It's looking quite good. It doesn't have the same kind of peak, but overall it's doing really well, especially at this noise normalized value. Next, at 100% PW fan signaling, <clears throat> we do see that the Wonder, Wonder Snail is kind of left behind a little bit. Mind, again, its line is super flat. So actually, in a bigger case, it's doing pretty okay. So again, the bottom end of what I consider a good fan. But really, you want to be looking up here at like the P14, the uh, P12, the uh, TLC12 is this one. Yeah, so the P12. Then we got the teal line, which is the TLG12. That's amazing, considering that it's got a very pressure-oriented blade design. And the F12 is also looking pretty good. These would be the ones to look at once you're looking at 100% PW boom fan signaling. So this gives you an idea of how to blend the data together to pick out which fan uh, would best suit your setup. We have noise versus that airspeed. I know the graph is a little bit complicated. I'm just going to try to walk through it. So uh, better fans are top left, worse fans are bottom right. And so if you're concerned about noise values, you do want to pick the fans that are further up towards the left. So right here in this sort of, I don't know, greenish line, I'm going to trace it out with the mouse cursor. Do 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 chick. Do, 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 and then it goes way over there. That is the, I believe that is the TLC12. I do apologize. I really thought I had these colors uh, better oriented than they uh, turned out to be. Uh, shame on me for using auto speed versus decibel reading. Going through my case simulation test. First, right here, I know it shares a very similar color. This is the Gentle Typhoon. It would be considered a very excellent fan 
in the case simulation test in terms of noise testing. Uh, then the color that is very similar to it right here is the TLC12. It is also performing fairly well overall in terms of this noise profile. Mind at 100% PWM fan signaling, it is not doing nearly as well. So if you're looking for the absolute max performance, it is not the way to go. But everything up to that, about 90% PWM fan signaling, it's still doing quite well. Then we have the Arctic P12. It is bouncing around towards the top, so it's also in an excellent position. The purple line is the TLG12, which is doing an amazing result. Again, I consider its blade profile design to be very pressure oriented. So it's amazing that it can crank out this much air speed for its given noise value that is just this high towards the top. And then uh, the next notable note is this one, the TLB12. It is pretty close to the top, particularly at higher RPMs, uh, but then it sort of fades away at the very tippy top. And we got this teal line. This teal line belongs to, oh my goodness, why did I create so many colors that look similar to each other? I'm going to say that that is the P14, and it's also doing fairly well overall. So if you're very curious about any of these fans in particular, I do, uh, I would say, look, take a look at my specific video for the fan in question. I'm not sure if all of these are going to be out in time, but in... Um, my recent roundups, I have the data for each of these fans better laid out um, than maybe in this one. So uh, I hope you can I hope you can find it. Or if you have a question about it, I'd be more than happy to answer it in the comment sections down below. I do read through it and I will answer questions. I do apologize if not all the fans are out by now because I just I just finished redoing all of my testing analysis for noise testing on these fans. So next we have the value proposition. So again, it's how much performance per dollar are we getting? So the TLG12 is an amazing position. It is first place both for the six and the 11 inch mark. So it is just a very good value uh, overall and it can be like, it's, it's even pretty good as a CPU air cooler. It's not the best, but it's pretty good and it's actually ranked like one of the best in value for that uh, category. So uh, again, you can just use this data however you like to pick out which fan gives you the best performance per dollar you want. Uh, we are, all these fans are sub $18 when I checked them on Amazon based on standard retail pricing that I could find for it. So uh, sometimes prices fluctuate and I do apologize for that. So I just tried to get it as uh, kind of best as I could for y'all. That concludes this roundup video. I hope you enjoyed this content. Uh, please subscribe for more. I do have other roundups planned. And again, this is just for the a roundup of, uh, well, all the fans that I've tested thus far that are uh, under $18. And as I continue to test more fans, I will uh, periodically do some sort of roundup like this. Uh, if you've got suggestions for fans for me to take a look at in the future, please leave those in the comment sections down below. I do read through it. If you've got think of ways that I can improve my videos, please that leave that in the comment sections down below. This roundup video is kind of a new thing for me, so I'm sorry if I uh, stumbled and stuttered a little bit as I uh, try to get my way through it. And um, the best way to support this channel is through Patreon or through Facebook um, membership. That is a new thing for me. Every penny that uh, you all will support me, are willing to support me with, will go directly into this fan testing endeavor to acquire better testing equipment. So I do appreciate all of you who are uh, joining me to help me with that. I do understand that I am a very small channel with not that many subscribers, but uh, regardless of whether or not you uh, want to support me in that way, hitting that subscribe button does show your support. And so I'll continue to make videos as best as I can with the current equipment I have. Um, other than that, have a great day. I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.